Working on the 4527A today. We're gonna to be replacing this drive motor. The seal has gone bad. So taking off about half of these bolts. Uh, an item to remember, there is a bolt in here that's a 13 millimeter. It helps if you leave the tire on here for this next part. What we did the last time we replaced this was we lubed this shaft because this is pretty hard to get this pounded off. Um, if you leave the tire on, you can take the feet off the ground, have somebody engage that roller. And as you spin the roller, you can take a hammer and tap the back of this to drive this off that shaft. There's no way to use a puller from the front side, so you're only have the option is to drive a wedge in here or a fork of some kind to separate these two. All right, guys, so we've got all the bolts out. The only thing we have left here is these two upper pins holding that back plate on. We went ahead and disconnected the hoses and I'm letting that hydraulic fluid drain off on my cardboard here. Some type of containment area is a good idea, uh, just so you're not tracking it all over the shop. We took those hydraulic hoses and just wrapped a, a glove around the end of each one and zip tied them to kind of contain that hydraulic fluid. And then I'll just take a bungee cord and tie it up on the machine just because the gravity is gonna cause more of that fluid to run out of that line. Uh, just less we'll have to replace and less of a mess. We're gonna take these three fittings off, transfer them to our new pump, and then we're gonna take the three plugs out of this pump and put them back in here so that there's nothing leaking out of that until we can get this. We got the fittings out of the old motor, um, got them cleaned up, do a general inspection, just check your O-rings before installing them on that new motor, save you a little headache. We went ahead and cleaned them up, got all the debris off of there. So we got the motor and the plates pulled off, just so you know what that looks like. That front plate, the back plate, it's just a flat one. These two pins came out of the top here. They hold that tie rod in place. Um, there are two washers. These are rubber washers on one of those pins. The other one has four to space equally between the plates there. Uh, I'd recommend before you start any of this process, take a picture uh, just so you can keep track of where all this goes. This is the part that you really need two people just because that motor is extremely heavy to wiggle out of there while you're trying to pop pins out. So a quick tip at this part of the process is we went ahead and put both of these plates back together with the new motor, making sure that our hydraulic fittings, uh, the holes are here at the bottom. You wanna get that out of whack. Um, and then we just put one bolt and nut in here to hold this whole assembly together. And then I hold it up and just put a punch in here. You can even use an extension, um, like a socket ratchet extension, just to hold that in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our tie rod set because there's four washers that go in here with this pin. And then once we get that set, we're gonna drop down and put this pin in. that has got your two rubber washers on each side. Once we get this assembly done, then it's basically set in place. And then we can hook up hydraulic hoses and start reassembling all this. So just a quick tip here, when you're putting this pin and these four washers back in, uh, it's hard to keep those washers together. So a trick is to just take you some axle grease or any kind of grease for that matter and it kind of helps those two washers to hold together as you're sliding them into place there. Otherwise, one of these is gonna to wanna to slip each time. We've got our fittings put back in the bottom here, got those turned the right direction and torqued down. Now we're gonna take these hoses off one by one and reattach them. And you can tell, by looking at this guy, that's filled up just in the 30 minutes we've been working on this. So good idea to use that zip tie or have some type of, some type of containment if you don't have plugs for the end of your hoses. So we're gonna take those down, drain them off in the pan and just hook them up one at a time get them torqued, we'll come back around front, get all these bolts put back on. So we got everything reinstalled, snugged up all the hardware, wiped down the excess fluid, we got the roller back on there. Uh, we did put some anti-seize on this shaft just because it's prone to get rust over time and it'll be hard to get this off if we have to repair that motor again. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is fold this up, get it outside, clean it, and uh, top off that reservoir tank to make sure that we've got our fluid back in there. Our level's excessively low because we got the feet down it only drains about a quart, quart and a half out of there. 